I think the future for like young LGBT people is incredible now in this country. That have grown up in a country which absolutely on every level treats its LGBT citizens exactly the same as everybody else. They'll be growing up on a level playing field and they've never had that before. We've never had that before. And this is actually has not been a three month or four month campaign. It's been a 40 year campaign and is the absolute epitome of a grassroots campaign. It started 30, 40 years ago when a tiny number of really brave men and women stood up and said they had nothing to be ashamed of. And 40 years later, the country agreed. We have nothing to be ashamed of. We're the same as everybody else. Well, hi, guys. How are you getting on today? Good. Hi, well, first thing I want to say congratulations on the film. It's, it's actually properly wonderful, which is it's a nice thing. Oh, thank you very much. It's a film that you properly enjoy. Well, five years ago, this all started. And what did you guys both think it would be at that point? Or did you have any preconceptions? <laughs> I had no preconceptions. I thought it was going to be a small little character documentary. Mm. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know. And I didn't really either. I did, you know, I knew that there would probably be some kind of activist element, and Panty's always wildly entertaining, mm. so there was always going to be that. Um, but I didn't know the way that things would work out. So you just kind of hoped that Panty would provide, basically. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> That's how I feel about her. You know, the last 25 years, that she will provide, I hope, and pay the rent. And did you think it would be a year or longer? Did you have any sort of idea at all? I think we were going to keep going. There was there was never any point where we went, you know what, mm. not, this is not worth proceeding with. We always felt that there was worth proceeding with. And then, but the last two years, yeah. we absolutely knew we were onto something great. And was there ever a point where you might have edited a version th two years ago before any of this happened and it might just have become a smaller thing? I suppose that was, I mean, it was, wasn't something that we ever really looked at. Mm. It, it is, you know, if we'd done that, it would have been a very, very different film. I'm very glad that we didn't. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but when do you think you knew that it was going to be maybe not just a good documentary or a small documentary, but something great and kind of bigger? If that's, if that's not very immodest. There you go, great and bigger. <laughs> it is immodest. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Um, it was the last year of it was certainly just thrilling because there were so many things happening, including Rory getting into trouble, which, mm. um, you know, was great for the film, not great for Rory, <laughs> but great for us. Um, but at, at getting out of that trouble, getting through that, the response to the trouble, and then going into the marriage equality referendum, we were just kind of event after event after event, and, you know, ending up in Ballon Road, it was a wonderful thing to be a part of. So. We'd no idea exactly how the, you never know exactly how it's going to come out until it, you're right at the end of the edit. And it's often right down to the last week or so of the edit. But uh, it is something that we're really proud of and we feel that we've uh, done Rory proud. Yeah. <coughs> well, Rory, how did you find doing the interviews? I mean, you must have done many over many years. Do you? Yes, do you like and many more that didn't make it into the documentary. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, yeah, I was fine with it because you know I've known Connor for a long time, so I never like, it didn't feel like you know a stranger was asking me super personal questions mm. or anything, you know. Um, so yeah, it was generally all pretty fine. Um, and the other thing is, of course, is um, he was filming for five years, but there would be long periods where I wouldn't see him. Mm. Mm. Um, and you can sort of get a sense of that by my hair and stuff <laughs> during the <laughs> during the documentary. Um, so you know, it wasn't like it was all the time. Yeah. So sometimes he, you know, he'd run out of money or something, and he'd disappear <laughs> he'd for months on end, and I would never see him. So yeah, um, so it kind of came in spurts of you know intensity. Well, there's one central documentary that goes, or sorry, one central interview that goes through the documentary where you're wearing a blue jumper. Um, as, was that done quite recently? Then I presume it was two weeks before the referendum result. Okay. So but, he, but he'd done a few of those central yeah. interviews yeah. along the way. And That's then true. That was, he kept the on most, yeah. do them. That was the most central of the central <laughs> interviews. <laughs> well, it seems like it was quite a raw, that seems like quite a raw interview for you. And was that something that, that took a while to get through? Did you just kind of plow through it? Was it? it was six hours. Wow. Was it? We were in your uh, apartment for six hours that day. God, I've blotted that out. <laughs> See, I, I've repressed a that and memory. <laughs> and in a way, you know, I'm really glad that we did that interview when we did it. Mm. Not necessarily in relation to what was happening around us, but it just, it, we knew we were coming towards the end yeah. and there was a kind of an openness and the even greater than what had been there before. So, I, you know, that interview was really, really important in the film. Well, it's quite, some, there are parts of, of the film that are quite emotional, but it's, it's also hugely entertaining. Is it tough to keep that balance? Because that's what you want to be. You want to be entertaining, but also tell a story and 
get something across. It, that is something that was ever present in our mind when we were editing, and I was very, very lucky that I got to work with Mick Mahon, mm -hmm. who's just a really, really great film editor. And that is some, you know, he, he's known in the business as the Maham Tribunal, you know, sort of like your material has to be good to get past it. Uh, so that working with Mick was absolutely key in keeping that balance between being entertaining and having the, the deeper elements to it. But one really important part of the film, I think, for me anyway, was that it's, it's an artifact of, of that day, particularly the, the marriage equality day. And it feels like if I ever forgot what that day was like, I could watch this and, and come back to it. I mean, it, did you have a sense of of kind of recording that for history, for posterity as well? Well, you know, we are Irish people too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it meant a huge amount to us as yeah. well, you know, uh, to all of the crew, to me, to everybody we met on the street. Um, it, you don't, you can't divorce yourself or distance yourself going, well, this will be, make great footage. It's just you're part of something huge that's actually mm. bigger than you might possibly expect it to be. And it was, it was a wonderful experience to, to do. What's it like to watch with an audience then, I suppose, for, for you? Have you watched it with many of your friends? or No. No, no. I've only watched it once. And oh, wow. Well. I'd watched a rough cut about, well, a very fine old rough cut, can't yeah. And then we changed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, um, no. And I watched it totally alone I, on purpose. I didn't want to be. Um, it's an awkward thing to be sitting there watching something like that, and then there's other people looking at you watching it. It becomes. <laughs> Slightly weird, so okay. no, I watched it at home on my laptop and I haven't seen it since. Okay, well, for our audiences now, what do you think they should expect from the Queen of Ireland? <laughs> well, I don't know if Rory can answer that because <laughs> yeah. I've seen it a lot. You've seen it a lot. <laughs> um, I hope that they thoroughly enjoy it. I hope that they thoroughly enjoy it and I hope that they get a sense of how this country has changed and is changing, and I hope they get a, a really good sense of what a great person and character Rory and Pante is. Oh. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to be really honest with you before we get started. I'm crapping it. While I breathe life into Pante, she breathes more life into me. How did this happen? It's nuts. Nuts.